G'day everyone, Tristram here for another episode of What Are You Staring At? Joined as always by Belle. Belle, how are you going today? I'm good, Tris. How are you? I am well. It's uh, a pretty dreary day here in Brisbane at the moment, which is uh, a bit strange, but yeah, you know, that's okay. I do have exciting news in that yes, I'm about to dabble us. in some... Uh, uh, it's called an immersion school program. So I'm, I'm about to start going to schools uh, to teach able-bodied kids about disability, which I think that is, is wonderful. freaking cool. It's so cool. I wish that I could go back to school just for this express purpose of having you come and do just a seminar. This. Well, if, if this becomes a thing, I think that you clearly should become a facilitator as well and come in and join the adventures uh, as we mould the minds for the future and, and show them yes, please. On what disability is and how we can normalise it. But anyway, that's my excitement. How, <laughs> how, are, you, how are you? you? We're still in lockdown at the time we're recording for Melbourne um, yeah. <laughs> listeners. Belle is what day? Day seven? Day? It's, uh, no, I've stopped counting. It's a They've blur. all run together. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've, only... I've heard on the grapevine, though, that you have been making the most of your time with when you say the grapevine, cooking. do you mean my my Instagram story? That's the grapevine. It's true. It's true. Um, yes. I do follow you on Instagram, funnily enough. Mm-hmm. Shocker. <laughs> um, no, yes. My The highlight of most of my days is the meals that punctuate the hours. They're the only thing <laughs> that stands out. Um, so what have I been making? I made some 10 out of 10, not to toot my own horn, focaccia, which was so good. Um, just like buttery and oily oh just so yum we had a loaf like this big I mean this is for the people who are watching on Facebook not listening this big like 30 centimeters long I don't know (laughs) and we ate it all the four of us in one evening um so that was a pretty good pretty good effort um and then I made teriyaki don which was so good stop it my favorite Mm, yummy and then I did um like authentic sort of carbonara as authentic as me a non-italian can make it um because it was like no cream it was just like eggs and parmesan and all the, the usual well, yeah, I, th- I thought there's not meant to be cream in carbonara I thought that's like a a thing well maybe that was a Madeline Beale special my mom <laughs> making um, carbonara with cream all my childhood so that's why I'm like oh this is more more authentic to not have it with it but maybe that's just the norm and my family's doing it wrong I, yeah look I I think you cook carbonara how you want to cook carbonara we're, we're not we're Thank not you. the police on carbonara passes we're not going to like <laughs> find people for for cooking delicious pasta goodness during lockdown. So there might be it. some people who disagree with you. I was I was going to say there there might be some very authentic uh, Italian uh, nonnas listening that are like, no, you do not put cream in carbonara. I apologize to all of them, uh, and please don't write yeah. into clickability. Um, <laughs> with a complaint. I also complaint. you you've intentionally. I I don't know if on purpose. Um, not spoken about uh, the cake. You cooked a cake as well, baked oh. cake. <laughs> I did bake a cake. I baked a cake and I, the whole purpose was to put icing on the cake and write on it in pink icing, which I think just kind of adds to the whole thing. Fuck COVID. And then eat it and feel sad. <laughs> so it was really good. It's it was cathartic. A healthy, yeah. It's my way of coping. I don't know what my therapist would say about it, but whatever. Oh, look, it <laughs> whatever. was delicious. Uh, it was rebellious. I like it. And mm-hmm. I'm going to use that baking, learning to bake, learning things, see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm moving. And now we're going to talk about university today. Well, that was potentially the worst segue I've ever done. And if the listeners or viewers realise um, I did not plan that at all, uh, quite obviously, but today we yeah. want to talk about our experiences going to university um, with the disability, some of the challenges we encountered, some of the great experiences that we had uh, as sort of an, an entry for anyone listening that might like to do the same. Um, yes. I, I, might, I might start because I've, I've got a Go really bad it. story to begin with. Go on, take we'll the wheel. Put us on the path towards university education. I remember graduating from school with with uh, decent to quite good grades and being told um, by uh, the Department of Education 
uh, and um, humanity social services that I should just repeat grade 12 because that's what disabled people do, Belle. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, I haven't How told have you this I story. I not heard this. I didn't want to trigger you. But yeah, so I was <gasps> looking at going to university. I approached um, at the time the state government system to get funds for care to go to uni. And that was their mm. response. Oh, no, don't go to uni. Just repeat. Great. I mean. Oh, my God. I, I, I hadn't done perfectly, but I didn't want to do a whole year just trying to, you know. <sighs> up, up my previous grades. inappropriate and offensive and just so far from okay that yeah. uh, oh guys Horrible. this is a raw reaction by the way i'm like raw reaction. For, for once i have like a few Nothing. words so, uh, sometimes i don't tell <gasps> bell what i'm going to say in this podcast guys because we want that <laughs> that raw instantaneous shock and horror um yeah fury. So my, my um my university education started quite strangely because of that so I, I genuinely had to fight to go to university I obviously told um the relevant people at the time uh to uh go expletives themselves and that I wanted <laughs> to go to uni because I'd already been accepted um but saying that though once I got to uni I found it one of the happiest times of my life I know that's gonna anger people um that hate exams I hate exams too I hate all that sort of stuff. But I loved going to uni for no other reason than for no other time in my life could I compete against my able-bodied peers on the same footing. And university was my chance to go, all right, guys, I can I can outstudy you. I can I can work yes. harder. And I'm gonna I'm gonna prove that I deserve to be here. Um and it was great. I had the support of a wonderful um uh, disability team there that basically coordinated um my, my classes to make sure that you know i wasn't driving my chair too long between classes um and, and everything like that and it was genuinely a great experience so what i would recommend for people from my own um experiences you might you might cop some knockbacks uh but don't yeah. stop use that as motivation and please Feel contact the fire. Um, the disability services at the universities, most of the, I'd say all of them in Australia have a disability services and they are the nicest people that will help you get what you need. For me, that was getting as well, um, we call them uh, PAs, um, mm. which is a bit strange, but they would basically help me <laughs> get books out of the library and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, it was great. That's so cool. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's I love my that. Uni. We went from the lows yeah. to the highs very quickly. <laughs> Good. A to Z. Thank We're you. quick, Thank efficient. You. Love to see it. A to Z. No, Learn that um, you too, by the way. A bad joke. <laughs> I just need to stop. I'm sorry. That's concerning everyone. that you were that old. <laughs> that old. Maybe that's what I was t- told to repeat. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> obviously joking. Obviously. What, what about you? Yeah. What was uni like for you? Well, I am still at uni. So my mm. beginning experience was not nearly as... I don't know even what the word for what that is. Um, <laughs> dehumanizing. Um, anyway, anyway, I'm still not over that. I'm gonna, we're going to circle back to it at some point. Um, but no, I did quite well in school equally, got accepted into my first preference for course, which was a Bachelor of Arts at the Uni of Ma- University of Melbourne. Um, and and, and that was in French. Bonjour, comment ça va? Yes, <laughs> majoring in French and literature. Oh, oui. Um, oui, oui. Um, I could do this podcast in French if, if anyone feels like it. I, I cannot. An audience. I cannot. Uh, what we'll <laughs> do is we'll get, just me talking. we'll get Belle to do French subtitles for all the French listeners yes. after the fact. Yep, there we go. Continue. Sorry, Belle. Done. Sorry, Done. Continue. Yes, no. But um, I, yeah, so I was at uni and I was also a day student at Res College. So I had sort of um, a more like typically American sort of university experience. They had like college parties and dining hall and all of those sorts of things. Um, Some of the bad culture, you know, (laughs) classic stuff. Um, But I got super involved as soon as I sort of got to uni in the various communities and that sort of thing. Um, So I had university support in terms of like exam support and that sort of thing Mm -hmm. because of my, so I have one arm, obviously. Um, And then I have- to all the people who stay. (laughs) Episode 10. Crazy. If if they didn't realise that by now, (laughs) they haven't been listening. They, mm, 
yeah, I'd be concerned. Um, and then I have a muscle condition in my um, dominant hand, my right hand, and that makes it very hard to hand write. So I don't really hand write at all. I have to type and I'm quite a slow typer and I get a lot of hand fatigue and pain. So I got very easily, it was like a 20 minute phone call and they're like, yep, you can have a laptop, you can have extra time, you can have like all of these great things. And they were like, yes, done. I was like, thanks guys, this is so good. Um, so that was really awesome. And then at college, I got involved in our diversity committee. Mm -hmm. um, I was head of I was head of the diversity committee for my second year at uni, which was awesome. We had lots of events like dinners and catch ups, and we had like a Paralympian come and speak at the college and all sorts of things. Because um, I was just super into like being in this community where it was so easy to like be accepted and, and show your passion about something, and it was supported, and I was able to advocate um so yeah really loved it and there are also um there's also disability like um there's like uni politics and there's like a disability party I think at mm. the uni I haven't been in it but I've heard of it um and so that's Vote really cool too Bell Beal is that what we're yeah we're launching no campaign now? <laughs> No, I, I'm now doing my law degree and I have very little time, very little time. I'm very busy and very tired. Um, but even in my law degree, I remember in one of my very first tutorials, there was a representative from the Melbourne Uni Law Students Society with dis students with disabilities, not the official name, apologies to the people um, who came and chatted to cl the class and was like, hey, if anyone with a disability needs a support group, like group of people to get around, like information sessions, all of these wonderful things, disability in the law, like they were super onto it. Um, and I've, I'm a part of that group now, which is so cool. And yeah, it's just been such a good place to like really get into my advocacy and have peers around me who also um, have disabilities and meet such a wide range of wonderful people. So I've loved uni as, as a woman with a disability. I think, I think it's really impressive and it should be the norm everywhere, but university more than any other type of institution I've been to is great at ensuring that the voices of all of its members and participants and students are heard. Um, so, true. so it's about us taking the leads um, and then that feeds back into the disability services that these universities offer. Um, and if there are concerns, because, you know, it's not always smooth sailing. Sometimes you mm. might have a lecture that um, doesn't understand uh, how fatigue plays a part in your disability or how all those different things are interwoven into how well we can perform in the classroom. Um, mm. but, but having that av those advocacy groups, having those councils and those disability services to help us not not fight the the battle but provide the documentation is is a really powerful thing definitely it's super useful and yeah I love even like my undergraduate degree was highly political like I mean an arts and French, a literature and French degree doesn't sound like it would be that political but this is university so of course it is like um I don't think I ever got through a tutorial where like Marx wasn't mentioned or <laughs> the communist manifesto um but uh, I, one thing I did find interesting about my experience is continuing in that sort of very comfortable position that I usually am in of being the person in the tutorial who would put like the disability foot in the ring or hat in the ring and be like, let's talk about this as well as part of this other political discussion we're having. So I think that's one sort of area for improvement. I mean, I think I was still noticing that, you know, despite all these wonderful groups, I mean, and how vocal it is at the uni, in the actual tutorials, I was quite often the only individual with a disability and the only one speaking from that perspective and bringing those things to the table so that's something for universities to improve upon and our society to improve upon but it was still you know a great learning experience yeah i think that there might be scope to look at um uh, sort of the entry for for students to get into universities if we think back full circle to the difficulties that i encountered through no fault mm. of my own it was quite a difficult thing and if it's the same for others we perhaps need to look at how we can support those in that system get into university so we have even more voices so we have even more representation because we've Definitely. rattled this statistic off so many times but one in five australians have a disability but that's not proportionate in in pretty much mm. anywhere um that i know um yeah so <laughs> no, i'm yet to be in a room yeah <laughs> with that. um so the easier we can make that for people um um the better the better will be for it i also i also just loved uni because um for me i've made a friends 
like my longest my longest friends are, are from university mm. um and i remember um one of them listens to this podcast like she would just go out of her way to help me at university um and i think there's a degree of camaraderie there and and supporting one another um everyone's experience might not be the same but um, I think I think there's the opportunity there for, for people to experience that. We also had the Red Room at University of Queensland, which is famous among uh, universities uh, for its um, policy where if, I, I think it was if Eagle Rock ever played, everyone had to <laughs> oh, drop yeah. their pants. That, mm-hmm. That's where it started. So apologies to everyone as uh, UQ alumni because that's where that, that started. I love how that's disseminated because we all do that at college here. Everyone does it. <laughs> um, everyone, everyone drops it. I mean, how Australian is that? <laughs> everyone <laughs> drops their pants to the Eagle Rock. Um, but no, I think it's so true what you're saying about the friendship and camaraderie that, really, that comes out of university. It's such a wonderful, like, range of people and and different life experiences yeah. that I would never have encountered otherwise you know schools tend to be quite zoned into an area so my school was sort of all very similar demographics mm-hmm. and at uni I've just met people from all over and it's been so wonderful and you know the girls that I live with now all of my closest friends are all people from university and they have all been such pivotal people in me my like recent growth and like com- becoming confident in my body and having a voice as a woman with disability and that those friendships and that wealth of wealth of wonderfulness is so such a benefit of uni for sure. And, and um, the only other thing I wanted to quickly say is that for those looking at going to uni, um, don't be afraid to get your OT, so your occupational therapists, physios involved, um, because the universities are more than happy to t- speak to them around the sort of adjustments that we might need in the classroom, um, so we can make those friendships and be Definitely. us and um enjoy uh, the wonders of uni this has been yeah. a very gushy episode i know it's but right. i kind it's, of love it <laughs> it's quite nice i quite enjoy it as well um well yeah. I'm, I'm done with uni i've, I've done three degrees so i'm out i'm finished i'm, I'm You're, never going back uh, what's it like being so highly educated <laughs> it's <laughs> so intelligent um, i i uh have a good deal of academic knowledge uh but practical knowledge not so great not, don't um, have I'm, I know knowledge. Tris is going to be very mad, but I would also just briefly like to mention that he was a candidate for the Rhodes Scholarship in I was, his time at university. Is that true? <laughs> I was shortlisted, but I did not get it. Um, so, I mean, how many of us have been shortlisted? Not me. <laughs> That's for sure. Have you, have you applied, Bell? That's the question. No. Well, but, Tris, this is about you. Okay. 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 <laughs> so, what we're seeing, everyone, is classic deflection. Um, mm. but it's what we both do. <laughs> Any psychology students out there? Bell, there's Bell something I, deep rooted here. <laughs> no one wants to see a conversation between Bell and I where we start complimenting each other because we will just deflect <laughs> until it becomes a void mm. of just silence. And anyway, literally. Um, so <laughs> it's very funny. Shout out to all the psychology students out there. Um, yeah. But we would love um, everyone to comment their own experiences at university to to share their wisdom because as we touched on it's such a wonderful experience and um to have so many people doing it more people doing it would be great um so we can get rid of some of those hurdles and barriers um tafe uni whatever you want to do um post post school um there's there's options there that's an episode well done us go us I'm clapping for anyone who can't self, see. Self-congratulatory. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll pat on the back. <laughs> there we go. Um, we'll see everyone next time. Cheers, guys. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye.